So it's time for us to go and take a look at macOS and compare it against Windows and see which operating system you should go ahead and use in 2023. Now, I will tell you, I am not a crazy power user. I'm not somebody who is, you know, doing such crazy things on their devices. But I will tell you, I use my Mac machines a lot and I use Windows machines a lot and I use Windows on Macs a lot via Windows Boot Camp. So there is a lot of overlap between a lot of, you know, features between Mac OS and Windows. And I will definitely tell you, there's not one that's like way better than the other one. If you have a Windows PC and you enjoy it, then I think it's perfect. If you have a, you know, Mac machine, then I think you'll enjoy that too. But I will say if you have an Intel Mac, you can install Windows on that device. But for Windows machines, you can't really install Mac OS unless there's like some like Hackintosh thing you build, unless there's like a Linux version that looks like Mac OS, things like that. But for the most part, on an M1 or a you know, newer machine, you're pretty much, you know, stuck with the Mac machine there. You can't really install Windows unless you do like a you know remote machine. So for the most part, what I'll tell you is between both, if you like one, then go for it. Personally, from my experience, I've always found that on Mac machines, on Mac OS, I have a great time doing things like video editing, Photoshop editing, and just basic like, you know, work. So whenever I'm working, or whenever I'm doing anything related to this channel or anything like that, I'm usually using a Mac machine. And the reason for that is because the tools that Apple has made are so natively intertwined within, you know, OS, within Mac OS, that things run so smoothly. So a lot of these applications that I use on an everyday basis, like Final Cut Pro, like Logic that I used to use all the time, like Safari, the Apple Notes application, the Reminders application, Apple Calendar, a lot of my stuff is already built in within Mac OS. So it just natively runs so well for me. If I do something on my Mac, I can go and pick up my iPhone and pick up from there. Now, Windows is very similar. Windows has their own applications you can use, but I have always found that if you're getting like a decent Mac you know, Mac OS machine, and you get the equivalent of Windows machine, if you're using Apple's own applications for the most part, you are probably going to get a better performing machine for the most part from the Mac than on the Windows for, you know, the comparable, you know, for some applications. Now, with that being said, a Windows machine is you can get them for much cheaper than you can for a Mac. You can build out your own custom PC for um, that is more powerful than probably a Mac at the comparable value. And I will also say that there's a lot more flexibility in that price tag. You can build out your own machine on a Windows PC. Now for comparing software, that's different, but that hardware that's behind it, you do have the ability of kind of, you know, changing things out here and there. And I will also add that a lot of like Windows laptops and Windows PCs, they definitely take more chances on their designs, which is very interesting. So of course we're talking about the operating system here, but it is a really nice thing when you're getting a machine that you didn't have to spend a crazy amount on and you are still getting very, very good power for sure. So that's a little bit of the hardware behind them. Now, another thing is within the way they look. So Windows has its own distinct look and, you know, Mac OS has its own distinct look. I don't know if there's one that is just screams out to me that that's the way better one. I've always found that the colors and just the way Windows looks and feels looks a little bit more professional to me, and I've always liked that. With Mac OS, it does seem a little bit too similar to iPhones. And with iPhones, it seems a little bit too childish. I get the same vibe everywhere I look on my iPad, on my Mac, on my iPhone. And to some people, they like that. I've always felt like with Mac OS, they should be able to change a few things here and there. And with Windows, I will say you have a lot more flexibility on your look. You can change a lot more, you know, you can install a lot more things, I would say, because there's just a lot more tools and a lot more customizations going on on the Windows side than on the Mac OS side. So if you're somebody who likes to really tinker around with the way your you know, PC looks, with a Windows PC, you might be able to do that a little bit more than the Mac. Now, of course, you can change your accent color, you can change where your dock is placed and so many other things like the colors and dark mode and all that within Mac. But I still think with Windows, you may have a little bit more of an edge there, which has always been something I like. Now, the smoothness and the fluidity is really going to be based on basically how good of a PC that you have. Personally, for me, if you're comparing an M1 Pro MacBook you know, Pro to the comparable, probably a, the Dell laptops that they have, whichever laptop is comparable in that price tag, you're probably going to be getting similar type of experience in the smoothness factor. So Windows isn't like, you know, it used to have this reputation, I think, of being like a bulky operating system. I think now things are kind of evened out. And of course, with the Windows 11 coming out, there have been a lot of things that, you know, can go wrong sometimes. But I think Windows has done a great job at kind of, you know, keeping things more stable. And I think that's another thing that kind of keeps in mind there too. Now with software updates, both of these operating systems gets, get updated all of the time. 
So there's updates all the time for Macs, there's updates all the time for Windows. And the cool thing about Windows, I think, is that there are more devices that can support Windows 11 than there are that support Mac OS, you know, the latest one. So I think for the device list, you're definitely getting way more devices that support something like Windows 11 than on the latest version of Mac OS. Now, one of the most important things that I noticed that I probably switched to Windows more so than on Macs is with gaming. So there's games available for Macs. I love gaming on it, you know, it's fine. But with your Windows operating system, you have so many more games available that just aren't available for Mac. And for a majority of games that are coming out that have already came out, especially emulators, they we always have to wait so long on our Mac machines. And this is a very annoying thing. I just wish that, you know, it was a lot easier for, you know, games to be ported on for both devices. Nowadays, it is a little bit easier. We've gotten a lot more games and a lot more emulators supported on our Macs. So that is really good. But that's like recent development, the last like six months. For the last like six years, five, seven years, whatever, since Macs have been kind of powerful, we've Windows has gotten such a head start. There are so many games available on something like Windows. And that is something that just always, you know, even Valorant's still not available on Macs. Like it makes no sense. But even on top of that, with something like these, you know, third party emulators, the thing is, is that these are developers that aren't massive teams. It's usually just a couple people making a certain application, and there's just not that many resources to port a game like this over to Mac. So a lot of the times there's any third-party development going on, it usually starts with a Windows PC. So that means not only now in the past games that are made, but in the future. The next time a massive game comes out or a massive emulator comes out, it's probably not going to be available on Mac first, it's going to be available on Windows first. And the other thing that is, you know, kind of on top of that is that we have to wait a long time before something like that is ported over to our Macs, you know, in general. And then we have to wait an even longer time for updates. We're seeing this right now with Reunion Jinx, and it's kind of an annoying thing. With Windows, though, that is not the case. Most of the time, a new application, new game comes out. It is natively supported within Windows, and eventually we get it on Macs probably, but there's been a lot of times where that's not the case, and we still haven't gotten it on our Macs yet. So I think that's another thing that kind of stood out to me. Not a big deal, but it's kind of one of those things. So at the end of the day, for a basic user like myself, I like using my Mac and I like using my Windows. I don't really think there's one that's the clear winner for me, but if I had to use one every single day, it would probably be my Mac. You know, I use Mac OS all the time. It is, you know, intertwined with all of my other devices, so it just kind of works out better. But if somehow Windows, like I could boot into Windows on my Mac when I'm on the go, I already have several different Windows PCs, but if I could boot into Windows on my Mac, I probably would be 50-50. I would probably be on macOS for Final Cut Pro, Audacity, and some other things like that. And then for Windows, I would just switch into Windows probably towards the later half of the day and play all my games, play everything I need to do, close my machine out, and then basically boot into macOS at the end of the day. So that's kind of how I see them both going on. If you have any thoughts or questions about this, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.